Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily Facebook show on photography. One of these days I'll get this right. First photography show on Facebook. Yeah, whatever. It's the same thing. You get the point. So today's little episode is going to be a brief one. This is a follow up on something that I talked about before with the addition of a new little accessory that makes it even better. So the follow up is on this guy here. I talked about this, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago. This is the Spider Light holster the same company that makes the spider holster. This is a Kickstarter project. And as far as I know, it's still on Kickstarter. If it is, we'll link to that. If it's not, then you're just gonna have to buy it retail. And the light version, this version here is all about working with smaller mirrorless cameras. It is a smaller version of the spider holster. You can use the bigger version on a smaller camera, but clearly with a smaller camera, smaller accessories are nice. And that's what this is for. So first off, I used this at the Adobe Max conference. I carried this camera, the GH4, with this lens, the 2470 equivalent, 12 to 35, all day, every day, every day. It was attached to my hip basically permanently, other than when I was obviously shooting. So I really came to like this and appreciate it. So just again, in case you didn't see that, although we'll link to the video so you can go back and see the original unboxing of this guy. Um, just to show you, let me uh, kind of recap here. So it's got a belt clip on here and it just, slides in. So here, let's have set up a little close up shot here. It's a bit of a crotch shot, but we'll get there. There we go. Um, so there's the, the clip. So right now it's on my belt. There's a little release on here to release it. It goes in and it clips in. So now it can't come out. But if you want it to be easier to access, you can flip that release up and then it just goes in and out like that. And honestly, it was a really, really cool way to carry this thing around. Um, I just found it to be very comfortable, very convenient, overall a great solution. But there's one inherent problem. I don't always want to hold the camera. Sometimes I want to set it down. Now I did actually, so on the bottom of this, let's here, let take a quick look here again. The bottom of this, there is a quarter 20 post. So you can attach another tripod plate or whatever you want into here. So that's awesome, right? So you can, and that's what I did. I attached the tripod plate for the, uh, the new Manfrotto mini video tripod, travel video tripod that I was, um, that I've shown here before as well. So I guess we'll link to that video too. Um, I, I had the plate on here for that because I was using the tripod quite a bit. I wasn't carrying it everywhere, but I used the tripod quite a bit. So I just left that on there and left it in place and that was fine. But you don't always want to use tripod. Um, and clearly if you want to set this down on the table, this is where the problem is. So let's go for that close up here. So I want to set this down for a nice level table shot and you can't. Right, so that's that's the problem. Uh, I could obviously get something under here. To, to hold, no, so it's just, this is not cool. So if you want to be able to set the product down, you can't. Well, so one night at max, I'm having drinks with some of my friends and one of them breaks out this little miniature, tiny little plate tripod thing that goes on the bottom of his camera and shows it to me and I'm going, oh, this is perfect. So Amazon, boom, order now. So finally I got that and now I wanna show this to you thing. Let's show this thing to you. So this guy, this is what it is. It is from a company called, well, Manfrotto. Hey, you know that. It's from Manfrotto. The, let's see, let's go for the close up on the packaging here. The model number on this thing is the MP3BK. Uh, Again, we will obviously link to this in the show video, show notes. Um, but the whole point of this thing is you get this tiny little mini tripod plate that you can attach to the bottom of your tripod, uh, bottom of your camera, and open up into three little legs. Boom, boom. Boom, tiny little thing to hold your camera up. All right, let's go for a close up. Clearly, this needs a close up. Let's get rid of this guy. Here's what we're looking at here this little tiny miniature tripod guy gets mounted to the bottom of your camera. And it doesn't matter if you have this or not. This you don't need, but you're going to see why in a moment having it with this is a great thing. So you have this little three legged spider looking thing. And when you don't want to use it, you just fold it up. And it's very low profile and it adds very little weight and size to the bottom of your camera. Pretty slick, right? So this thing, let's see here. One thing I want to show you before I go and attach it onto here. This thing, if you look at the top of it, it does have a designator of where the front is and the front is where the two legs are. But we're going to find very quickly that putting that on the front on my camera with this guy on there is not going to work because the post gets in the way. Fortunately, it works the other way as well. Also, when you look at this, you'll see that there are three. So this is the quarter 20 post. There are three tracks that that can go into, and that is presumably, I didn't actually read the manual, but I'm presuming that that is so that you can position it in a way that doesn't interfere with your battery door. Because remember, whenever you attach anything to the bottom of your camera, 
if you can't get to the battery door when that thing is attached, then that thing you've attached has just become a hindrance and become a bit of a problem. So this guy, I found for my combination, I need to put it off to the side. So let's undo this thing. So here, let me first show you how it should go on, right? So this is supposed to set this in a way that you can get to it. It's supposed to go with the two legs forward, but because of this post here, that really gets in the way. I, mean, I suppose maybe I could, I don't know, maybe if I guess if I went with the center post, I could probably work it that way, but I don't want to do the center post because if I do the center post, then the battery door is going to get in the way, right? If I open this up, come here, you open that up and put this where it would be, you see that I wouldn't be able to open that. So what I want probably want to do is mount it using a different hole, one of these other side holes. Let's put this in a way so you can see it. So there you can see the three holes, three tracks. So if I put it on one of these side tracks, then I'll be able to get to this, at least especially if I just kind of rotate it out of the way, which I found that I can do. So I want to put mine on a side track, but by putting it on a side track, you'll see that the front post, the front leg hits that post. So I found for my combination, if I put it backwards, it works perfectly fine. And because the camera is not that heavy, this will hold up even with just the one post on the front. Now you can imagine that probably the reason that you want to have the two legs in front is because obviously there's more support with the two than with one. If you have a longer, heavier lens on there, it may weigh it down and kind of spread it out so it doesn't stay up. And in fact, I did find, I tried it with the larger lens, the 35 to 100, so 70 to 200 equivalent, and that did weigh it down. It wouldn't hold up stable with the one post in front. I didn't try it with the two posts in front, but that probably would hold just fine. But I'm not usually shooting that way. So, you know, you, you adapt it to the way that you shoot, whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing on the way that I want it. So that's gonna be front post first. And I'm going to go into the side uh, slot and here, the side track. And so let's just get this thing into place. So we'll thread this guy through. And oh, by the way, I, as a test, I set this up with the one post forward. Um, by the way, you know that little coin pocket? Carry a coin in it for your tripod, that for your tripod adjustments. As a photographer, that's a great use for that little pocket. Um, anyway, so I set this up with the one leg forward with this camera combination. So the GH4 and this 24 to 70 equivalent lens. And I left it all night, balanced out so that it was even, left it all night, checked it this morning, and it was in fact still perfectly balanced. So overnight it did not drift, um, you know, I can't say at all, but it certainly didn't drift any noticeable amount. So even with the one leg forward, depending on your camera lens combination, it should be stable enough. All right, so that's on place, obviously very easy to do. Fold that down and now it's out of the way. And just to prove that this still works, I can still put that onto my hip there. So there you go, nice and easy, totally out of the way. And now let's go ahead and pop the legs out. So one, two, three. So you just pop the legs out like so. And of course you adjust them to stabilize it. So now let's see, let's do this. If I go forward view on this camera, put the LCD forward. I think, do I have, let me turn on the, yep, the levels are up. So you can see the little level line on there. So I would adjust this so there the line is obviously not straight. So I can adjust this until that is even. And now I know I got a straight shot. So like I said, I left it like this overnight and it did not shift at all. So it's great. It's nice and strong. Now I do wonder, these legs, this appears to be some kind of spring mechanism, uh, which is probably a really clever way to keep it from getting loose over time. There's no, there's nothing for me to tighten on here. It's not like a tripod leg where you have a little tool to tighten it up. This seems like it's going to hold and just continue to, because it's a tension spring thing, it's gonna just stay tight all the time. I don't, you know, who knows? Time will tell whether it will actually do that or not, or whether it's going to wear out over time, but it works. And this allows me now to get a tabletop level shot, which is exactly, exactly what I was missing when I was using this before. Uh, so a uh, quick shout out for those watching live. Hello, Javier. Thank you for watching live as always. Anybody else who's watching live, send us some love, say hello. We'd love to hear from you in there. Uh, also, if you missed yesterday's 100th episode, do go back and watch that. Um, real quick little th shout out in there. I did uh, I did mention the future of this show and how it's going to progress. Um, it's going to involve this thing called Patreon, which uh, is linked to right here. So click on that. Well, that's not a link. You can't click on that, but type in patreon.com slash photojoseph. Read all about it there and watch yesterday's video as well. Um, I wanna show you where to buy this thing. It is cheap. This little accessory is only 20 bucks, 1988, both on Amazon and on, um, on B and H. So purchase from wherever you prefer to purchase. There are links to both of those sites or will be links to both of those sites in the description below. 
And that's it, 20 bucks for this thing. I think it is uh, $20 very well spent. Now, last time I showed something Manfrotto, I talked about how awesome it is that their stuff is made in Italy. Not everything is, just so you know, like this does have a made in China on it, uh, but the quality seems to be absolutely solid. And at 20 bucks, you know, you can't beat it. So there you go. So that is today's photo moment. I hope that is useful and interesting to you guys. Tomorrow's photo moment, I uh, completely forgot what we're gonna do, but we're gonna do something great. And so uh, just watch on Facebook for the live announcement, or if you're watching these on YouTube, we'll just post that as soon as it's ready. Talk to you guys later, bye-bye.